The Melba Story. The story of Australia's most famous woman. The true story, fully authenticated, and featuring another wonderful Australian singer, Glenda Raymond. The Melba Story. At Covent Garden in 1889, Melba was the new star, and every performance in which she appeared drew a packed house. These were the beginning of the famous Melba Nights, which were to continue for 30 years in ever-growing triumph. But at this stage of the singer's life, there were many who resented her success, and rumours were circulated to the effect that Covent Garden was to be set afire on one of the Melba Nights. Melba laughed at this idea, but one night the theatre did actually catch on fire, and a panic was averted only by the courage and self-possession of Melba, who, in a speech from the stage, calmed the audience and saved the situation. A few days later, the Australian star appeared with the famous brothers Jean and Edouard de Resque, at an Albert Hall concert. Madam Elba, are you ready? It's time for your item. Yes, coming. Good luck, Nelly. Thank you, Edward. And when you come back, we will have a surprise for you. A surprise, Jean? Don't tell her. Oh, no, Edward, of course not. Oh. Go on, Nelly. Do not keep your audience waiting. Oh, I'm dying of curiosity, but I suppose I have to be patient.
well, superb, magnificent. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Bravo, my dear, bravo. Who is this? My, my dear Nettie, may I present one who, in his own opinion at least, is the greatest man in England. Oh. Or perhaps I should say even Europe. The world. The universe. This, Nellie, is Signor Francesco Poirlo Tosti. Signor Tosti? Oh, I've looked forward so much to meeting you. You see... I know what you are going to say. That you have often sung my song goodbye. Is it not so? Why, yes, And you I... have imagined, no doubt, that the composer of this sad little song must also be a sad little man. Why, no, I... I... wish now that I'd never written the accursed thing. I cannot get away from it. Everywhere I go, I hear deep, tragic voices singing goodbye forever. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dusty, my friend, you must sing that for the Queen. Oh, yes. Oh, no, no. At Windsor Castle, we must be so, so correct on our very best behavior. Oh. I'm not joking at all, for Her Majesty does not wish to be amused. <laughs> what is all this about Windsor Castle? <laughs> Hadn't you heard, Nellie? We are to sing for Queen Victoria and for the Empress of Germany, who is a guest at the castle just now. Am I invited too? Invited, my dear. Commanded. The three of us. Oh. I arranged it myself. Tosti is singing teacher to the royal family. Oh, yes, I give them all their lessons. I teach them to sing virtuous songs of love triumphant or of passion nobly renounced. <laughs> oh, Tosti. My own song, Parted, for instance. That is a great favorite with Her Majesty. Ah, uh, you must sing it for her, my dear. <laughs> when do we go to the castle? On June the 4th. Oh, but I'm singing that night. I'm doing a performance of Rigoletto. That will not make the slightest difference to the existing arrangements. The fact that the performance is to be given at Covent Garden that night is quite outside the knowledge of anyone at the castle. It is of no significance at all. How do we go to Windsor, Tosti? By train. And we meet at 3 o'clock at the station. <laughs> Come, come, my children, we must hurry, hurry. The train leaves in one minute, less than one minute. Be quiet. This madman, Tosti, he keeps us waiting for half an hour, and now he leaves us all behind. Oh, wait for us, Tosti. <laughs> He's like a black bouncing ball. This way, follow me. Why does Tosti wear that long black cape? Oh, huh? For effect, of course. He wishes to be taken for a spy. Oh, there's the train. We'll miss it. No, wait. Wait, do not let the train start here. Why? Who are you? I am the County Castellani de Palazzo de Cotone de Bruzzo. Lovely. And these are my friends, my Mother, Mr. Jean Doresque, and Mr. Edouard Doresque. Oh, pleased to meet you all, I'm sure, but this train should be on its way by now. The Queen commanded to wait for us. The Queen? Do you dare disobey? Oh, no fear. I'll hold the train all day if the Queen says so. No need for that. Open the door, please. Right you are, Your Honor. Madame Elba? Thank you. Gentlemen. Uh, after you, Edward. No, no, Jean. After you. And now, close the door. And forward in the Queen's name. Just a moment, we'll return to the Melba story. The Melba story. My children, here we are at the Windsor. And how do you feel, eh? Quite exhausted. <laughs> I've never laughed so much in my life. There should be a law against Tosti. <laughs> an anti-Tosti law. It sounds like an opera. <laughs> oh, I could make it an opera. 
Senti tasti, oh, come no. si chiama questi pasti? E <laughs> 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 sick, tosti, be quiet. The villagers are all looking at us. <laughs> Shouldn't there be a carriage to take us to the castle? But of course. There is no carriage, Tosti. Nothing but a rickety old cab with a driver who eyes us most suspiciously. <laughs> Ask him if he's here to pick us up. My good fellow, are you from the castle? No, sir. I be from the station. From the station? What does he mean by that? He means that he's here to pick up passengers from the train. Oh, I see. You are stationed at the station. Will this be my stand, sir. Will you take us to the castle? You'll never be going to the castle. Why not? He thinks Tost is one of these anarchists. I am the Count Castellani di Palazzo Micotone d'Abruzzo. We're due at the castle at four o'clock by command of the Queen. Can you get us there by then? Well, I don't know. I, I suppose I could. Come on, get in, all of you. Avanti! To the castle! In the Queen's name! And hurry, please! Get up. What's the time now? A quarter past four. Well, I think we'd better notify someone. Where's Tosti? He's disappeared. Look, there he is on the sofa. Asleep. Hey, Tosti, wake up. Hmm? Uh, what is it, Bertha? It isn't Bertha. Oh, I wasn't dreaming. Tosti. I was struggling with my wife. She was trying to throw me under a train. <laughs> Oh, what a relief to find that it didn't happen. It will happen one of these days if you keep misbehaving yourself. Look at the time. At Windsor Castle, my dear time, stand still. But I'm singing at Covent Garden tonight. You mean that you are announced to sing at Covent Garden tonight? It's a very different thing, believe me. But I must sing. Her Majesty regrets this delay, but we have been waiting for her daughter, the Empress Frederick, who went for a drive. She has not yet returned, but Her Majesty has decided to receive you alone. Will you all follow me, please? Your Majesty, may I present the distinguished Australian soprano, Madame Melba? We have heard a great deal about you, Madame Melba and look forward to hearing your voice. Uh, from what part of Australia do you come? From Richmond, Your Majesty. It's a suburb of Melbourne. We have a Richmond not far from here. Is it anything like your birthplace? Very different, I imagine, Your Majesty. And uh, what are you singing for us? Is there anything Your Majesty would particularly like to hear? Perhaps we had better let our dear Tosti choose the program. It will be a pleasure, Your Majesty. And now, may I present Mr. Edouard Dresk and Mr. Jean Dresk. You are welcome, gentlemen. And now, Tosti, what music are we to hear? Well, first of all, Your Majesty, Madame Melba will sing my own song, a party. We shall be most interested. When you are ready, Tosti. My dear? Yes, Mr. Tosti. I do not need music. I play it for memory. Now.
charming, my dear. You have a very fine voice. Thank you, Your Majesty. And now, Mr. Jean de Resque will sing La Donna et Mobile from Verdi's Rigoletto. La Donna et Mobile, qual più malveto, muta da cento e di pensiero. La Donna et Mobile, qual più malveto, muta da cento e di pensiero. The Empress is very late. Yes, ma'am. While we are waiting, Tosti, shall we have some more music? Your Majesty is a medical guard. No, no. We have already given eight items. Oh, we are not in the least tired. Please go on. Very well, Your Majesty. <clears throat> Mr. Edward de Resk will sing The Calf of Gold from Guno's First. Clear away! The cuff of gold in his pump and pride at all him in his pump and pride at all him east and west of hot for gold. The tail of feminine is a bull, he's a hot bull. The tail of feminine is a bull, he's a hot bull. And now, Tosti, may we not hear again our own dear Australian, Madame Melba? Uh, uh, Madame Melba, will you sing A Faux et Louis from Verdi's La Traviata? But Mr. Tosti, what about tonight's performance? Madame Melba will sing A Faux et Louis from Verdi's opera La Traviata. Empress Frederick. Ah, uh, what a treat you have missed, Vicky. We must have more. More? Tosti, I am sure the Empress Frederick would like to hear the trio from the last act of Faust. Oh, no. We've sung ourselves into a state of exhaustion. Well, I warned you, did I not? Uh, Tosti, are the artists ready? Uh, yes, Your Majesty. For the third time, we present the trio from Guno's Faust. Oh, <laughs> 
will never do it, Nelly. The train is due to leave in one minute. But I must catch that train. I must. Avanti! Get up. There's the train in the station now. Oh, wait for us. One moment. Aspetti! It's going. Stop it in the Queen's nest. Too late. You will not sing tonight, Nelly. But I must. If I break my contract, I'm finished. Stranded at Windsor, over 20 miles from Covent Garden, Melba has less than an hour to keep faith with the public and her management. We'll hear how she coped with this situation in the next fascinating chapter of The Melba Story. The Melba Story was written by John Ormiston Reed and produced by Dorothy Crawford. The Australian Symphony Orchestra was conducted by Hector Crawford. The role of Melba was spoken by Patricia Kennedy and sung by the Australian coloratura soprano, Glenda Raymond. <laughs>